In the last video, I thought I was gonna get all 50 of my meat birds butchered, but if you watch that video, you know, I fell pretty short of that goal. I think I only ended up getting 19 of them done, which was not even half of what I was setting out to do. Today, I've lowered my goal a little bit. I do need to butcher birds again today, but I'm only trying to do 15 of them. And the reason for that is that I think that's a little bit more of a manageable number and not to mention the fact that there's other things that I need to get done today. We're rolling into the winter pasture right now. I've got one cow left that I'm watching that I'm, I'm now thinking she is bred for a while there. I was a little unsure, but she's looking like she is bagging up a little bit. And we also got a little storm last night. So I'm wondering if maybe that might've brought that new calf into the world. So we gotta go check on her, butcher chickens, and the other thing that I really wanna get done today is I need to wean the Bismarck bull calf. I've noticed that he's been following cows around a lot and he's even been trying to ride some of them. I don't think he's big enough to get the full grown cows, but he probably could get a yearling heifer if you know conditions were right. So we need to get him out of there because I don't want any accidental breeding. Well, we've got him out. I want to run him over the scale and get a weaning weight on him. And that'll be good information to have to sort of track his progress as he grows up. So we've got a lot to do today. Time to get after it. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Where are these cows at? Here's a few of them. Oh. That. Alright, I gotta get out and look at something. We might have had our last calf. That one right there looks like it could be a newbie. And I'm pretty sure that's the last cow. Number 58. It's definitely a new calf. Last calf of the year. Well, that is awesome. Last calf of the year. Um, that makes me feel like I should do a, a little wrap up of calving season this year since we are officially done. We started this year with 36 bred cows and I believe the first calf came sometime the beginning of March. I don't have the actual date with me, but let's say it was the first week of March. Our last calf here has been born. This is the first week in May. So basically, we got all of our calves on the ground within a two month time frame. Out of 36 cows, every single one of them either had a calf or one cow aborted a calf. And of the cows that had calves, we had one that died a couple, two, three days later, and another one that was stillborn. I think only once in my life have we had a 100% calf crop, and that's not normal. I, I think that every year during calving season, I expect to lose a few at least. And I think this year, this is a pretty, pretty reasonable outcome. One abort, one stillbirth, and then one that just didn't make it after a few days. I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. Of course, a 100% calf crop is what I would like to get, but it's really not a realistic expectation. You can see that pretty much all of the feed out here is heading out and we've got thistles coming on like crazy. But under the oak trees, at least, the grass is still a good green color. So I think uh, they're still gonna be eating this and doing pretty good on it. Probably in no more than a month's time, we'll be pulling them out of here. But if it's still thick like this, I'm gonna need to get out here with the brush hog and chop some of these thistles down. In fact, I might do that anyway before we gather them because trying to ride a four-wheeler through that, <laughs> no thank you. While that's heating up, we'll go take care of a few other little things here. Mostly I just need to uh, run down here and check on the bulls, make sure they've got enough hay and enough water to be happy today. Cows are all laying around, lounging out in the sun, which tells me their bellies are full 
and their hearts are content. You're probably gonna hear a lot of airplanes in the background today. You can see these rice fields are flooded. They just got the water on them. Oh, maybe yesterday they got them completely flooded and they're probably gonna be planting the rice out here today, which they do with an airplane. So those guys are working hard. They're planting rice everywhere right now. How's things in the bullpen? Definitely got enough hay. What are we doing with our water here? I need to clean that out. I think what I've learned out here is that I need, when I put a permanent water uh, set up in here, I need to put it far away from the feed bunk. Having the water right next to the feed bunk is not working to my advantage because they eat a little hay and while they still got hay in their mouth, they'll reach over here and get a drink. Every day I gotta clean hay out of this water trough and I think if the water trough was like on the other side of the pen, I, I probably wouldn't have to mess with this. Maybe you guys like hay soup, I don't know. Oh, shoot, maybe we'll just dump it out and start over. I will have to say the cast iron tub is a great water trough choice for bulls because if they start pushing it around or whatever, they're not gonna hurt this thing. The bad thing about the cast iron tub is it's kind of a pain to clean out because just to tip it over to dump it is a feat of strength in itself. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe making a sort of, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but like a cradle or a rack to set the tub on and then take advantage of the drain hole that's in the tub already and maybe plumb like some two inch pipe out the bottom with a valve so you could just open the valve to dump all the water out. I don't know, it's, it's something that I think about while I'm changing their water, how nice it would be, but I don't really think about it any other time. So we'll see if it happens. In the last video, I was talking about how my my chicken scalder was kind of the choke point in my operation. I was losing a lot of time babysitting that scald pot, keeping it at the right temperature. And several of you suggested a sous vide, I'm probably saying that wrong, but a sous vide cooker. I'd never heard of that. I had no idea what it was, so I looked it up and you guys are right. That's exactly what I need for that scald pot. I think that'll work perfectly. I've got one ordered and hopefully it'll be here in time to do my last batch of chickens. So thank you if you're one of the people that suggested that. Several of you did, and I'm excited to try it out. Look where they were there. 155, it could cool off a little bit. All right, well, the next several hours for me is gonna be pretty much exactly what you saw in the last video. So I'm just gonna pick the video up when I'm done. All right, chickens are finally done for the day. I think in total, I've got about 35 of them done and it looks like there's only 15 left in the pen here. This pen looks empty now. I feel like this is gonna be really easy to finish, although it'll be exactly the same as what it was today. And although I'm not completely done harvesting all of these meat birds, I, I think in this video, I would like to do sort of a cost breakdown and, and figure out how much money I've actually got into these things and how much each bird cost me to raise. Throughout this process, I've been saving all of my feed bags and they're, they've all cost about $25 per 50 pound sack. And to get 50 Cornish cross meat birds up to harvest weight, I used 20 sacks of feed, which equates to $500. The chicks themselves cost about $3 a piece and I ordered 50, so that's $150 there. 
Fortunately, the hatchery, as they often do, they sent me a couple of extra ones, so that sort of made up for the ones that I lost. Factor in another 40 or $50 for miscellaneous items such as ice, bleach, the electricity that it takes to run the heat lamps when they're small, not to mention the shavings that I was putting in the brooders. I'd say we, we easily have $50 of miscellaneous expenses. I already had feeders, I already had waterers, I already had all the processing equipment, so I, I fortunately didn't incur that cost. But still, all said and done for these 50 birds that I ordered, I'm in them about 700 bucks. Which brings my grand total to $14 per bird is what it cost me to, to raise them. All the way from day old chick to two month old broiler ready to go in the freezer. In the comments I noticed somebody asked me if I saved money raising my own birds as opposed to buying them at the grocery store. And, and no, you don't save money. You actually spend quite a bit more money to do it this way and you put a lot more work into it to do it this way. The main motivation for raising your own meat chickens is not to save money. It's to give yourself quality that you simply can't buy at the grocery store. My family has always raised our own beef. And then when I was in college, I started raising pigs along with the steers. And at that point it was kind of like, the only meat we were buying at the store was chicken. And it wasn't long before I decided that I wanted to raise my own chicken as well so that I wouldn't have to buy any meat whatsoever at the grocery store. Some people might not care about this, but to me and my family, this is important. So that's why we do it. So with that being done, let's see if we can't catch that Bismarck bull calf, get a weight on him and I'm, I'm still undecided about where I'm gonna put him. I'm either gonna put him in the bullpen with the other two, or I'll lock him in the little corral there so he would be like right next door to the bigger bulls. Some people were asking about this scale head, um, you know, wondering about it sitting out in the sun and how long it would last like that. But these are really easy to remove and in fact, I think they're meant to be removed when you're not using them. What I'd like to do is get a Pelican case for this thing so that I've got a nice secure case for it. And then I can keep it in the house and only bring it out here when I need to use it. They make it that way so that it's a lot easier to charge this because so, it has a battery. It doesn't, need, um, it doesn't need an outlet to plug into to work. And it's a lot easier to just bring it home to charge it than it would be to try to charge it out here. I'm wondering what the odds are I can do this without a four-wheeler. I don't really want to run home and get one. And I think I can do it this way. We'll see. I might have to, I might have to catch several of them, but that's no big deal. We can do it. First thing I got to do is spot him. And I think I do see him clear at the end of the pasture. He's been chasing this cow around all day. I think that's that's what I'm seeing here. So that just sort of cements my decision that I'm doing the right thing here. Usually I wean calves a little bit later, but they would be steers or heifers, and I don't have to worry about this sort of thing. But you can't say he doesn't know what to do. Well, it's not on purpose, but it looks like I'm gonna pretty much get everybody. You got tired from all that chasing, huh? He just needs to stop and get a little drink. Last one, buddy. Better enjoy it. Well, speaking of buddy, how's it going? <laughs> no, I don't need you. <laughs> Everybody's coming now. Buddy, really? Atta boy. That's what we wanted. Well, let's get him on the scale and see what he weighs. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say 500 pounds. Sorry, buddy. Thank you. 
Well, there really wasn't any need to keep him in the chute or even body squeeze him. He was standing still in there. I got the weight on him. That's all I really wanted. So I've got him back in the working tub here. And while he's in there, I'm gonna enter some more things into the scale head. I put this weight in my yearling bulls session. So even though he's not a yearling, this is a weaning weight, but there is a place on the scale head where I can make a note of that. Let's go put him in his new home. Skittish, huh? Good thing you didn't challenge that panel. Well, just by the way he's acting, I can't leave him in this uh, little corral here. He'll break through these panels no problem. So he's gonna have to go in with the big boys. Let's let them out and get everybody acquainted. They don't even care. Hey, you guys, you knocked my camera over. My concern is these gray panels here. These things are paper thin. If they just if they just look at them, they bend. So, I mean, if I had a better fence here, I'd just let the two older bulls and the little bull in this bigger corral because they'd have a lot more room. But as it sits now, I just don't trust this fence line uh, to hold these guys. If they smell a cow or if they just decide they want out, they can walk right through these panels. So. That's part of my plan, hopefully, for this year is to get this a little bit more reliable so that I could use this pen in that way. But for now, it, it just is what it is. I'm just kind of sitting here watching these guys, seeing what they're doing. The two older bulls could care less about that Bismarck calf. They're more interested in trying to pick at the little bits of grass along the fence line there. The Bismarck calf is looking at his mother and she's out there calling for him, which is, that's just gonna happen for the next day or so. And I think that's probably the biggest reason why I don't just wanna leave him in here because of how bad these panels are and his mom's gonna be out there calling for him, I don't think he would stay in here. I, I think it'd only be a matter of time before he broke th through those. I wouldn't wanna put three full grown bulls in the bullpen, but putting three small ones like this, I think is gonna be fine. And it's not gonna be for very long. I'm hoping that it's only maybe a week or two that all three of them have to stay locked up in there. And once the weaning process is kind of complete, my plan is to be able to put all three bulls out in this little field. Well, I was really just kind of trying to wait and see how the introduction was going to go, but they don't really want anything to do with each other. I didn't want to just put the Bismarck calf directly into the bullpen with these two larger bulls. If there was to be a fight or something, there's just not a lot of room in there for them to sort it out. But the way they're acting out here, I don't think that's going to be an issue. So I'm going to let these guys pick at the grass for a little bit longer. I mean, it's not like there's much here, but they, they really seem to be enjoying it. So we'll let them do that for a little while, and then I'll try to shoo them all back in there. I think within a week or two, I'm not sure how long it'll take for the video to come out, but I think I'll be able to get this little field which is about two acres i think i'll be able to get it secure enough where i will feel comfortable putting the bulls out there and not worry about them breaking through to try to get with the cows and a week's time is about right for 
the weaning process to kind of be complete to where this little guy isn't going to be trying to get out there but man that, that just can't come soon enough because you can tell even though they've got more hay than they can eat in there they get out here they just love picking at that grass that's really what they want and i want them to have it Well, there's certainly a lot of sniffing going on and a lot of following each other around the pen, but I think in time they're all going to get used to each other and nobody's getting aggressive or angry, which is the nice thing about having young bulls. They don't really start acting that way until they're a little bit older. But yeah, I think these guys are going to be fine in here. Today was a good day. We got our last calf on the ground. We got the Bismarck bull calf weaned off of his mom and I got a big bite out of the rest of my meat birds. I've only got 15 left and that'll feel really good when that gets done. But I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today guys and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.